Mike asked, if money was tight, would you rather invest in an expensive boat or an expensive stand? Hmm. I'll give you my opinion because uh, Dan obviously sells expensive stands. So. Who do you think I'm biased? <laughs> <laughs> I would 100% buy a stand. I had, I had like two buddies last year get into hunting, and they were wanting to buy the biggest and baddest new bow for the first, their first bow, you know, and I, they're going to spend like $1,500 on a bow with the sights and the arrows and everything, you know? And I was like, I'm like, guys, you take that, take the money, buy a stand and sticks and then, and then whatever's left over, then buy you your bow. I said, you're going to suck. You never shot a bow before. You're going to suck anyway. None of this new technology is going to help you. Just buy one that's five years old, spend 500 bucks on it. And then take the other thousand dollars and get a stand and sticks and it'll last you the rest of your life. And, and I mean, I think that's logical advice and nobody should have any other opinion. (laughs) (laughs) uh, You you know, um, you're pretty much right. And and the reason I say that is because there really isn't a big difference between a $500 bow and a $1,500 bow, a little bit of speed or whatever. doesn't make a huge difference. It really doesn't. I mean, no, uh, the, the speeds the haven't changed though. Drop the bow and I mean, drop the string on either bow. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't yep. think you save a lot. You, you know, um, you just got to get good with the bow. You got to pick yeah. one that fits you well. Who makes it doesn't really matter. No, I mean, I tend to, uh, buy my bows from, I make sure I buy them from good people. I like That's Yeah, literally what I do. I mean, look at the hunting yep. public. I, um, they decided to do all Walmart bows or Kmart or wherever they went. Yeah, they bought a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're killing deer. I mean, if it um, mattered, they wouldn't do that. Right. Now, with uh, that said, I don't think you have to buy one of my stands either. I don't I don't think that that's a necessity. Um, you can kill them without it. You know, um, but it has its advantages. And yeah. I think the advantages are above that of uh, buying bow. an expensive bow, you yeah. know. Yeah, I think what the technology has gotten better with bows over the last five years is how you can work on them and tune them has gotten better. That's true. That's true. And I, but like I would imagine to say 90% of hunters, that makes no difference because you don't know how to use it or tune a bow anyway. Yeah, they go to a pro shop anyway. There's 10% of us that are nerds about it and can tune our own bows and stuff. The rest of everybody just takes them and the bow tech works on them, which it doesn't matter to that guy anyway because he knows how to do it all. So if you're into that kind of stuff, yeah, like those are the new bows are easier to tune because they got, you know, cam spacers that you can pop in and out without taking the axle apart. I mean, all this other stuff that's really nice for like guy like me that tunes his own bow. But if you're not into that, it's like, I don't know how much technology has come now. Like there's advantages, but like a lot of like prime, you know, uh, there's advantages to buying certain bows because of, like warranty things like prime gives you new strings and um, every couple of years and transferable warranties and all this stuff. That's all stuff you got to look into, but it's like, you're not going to use any of that stuff. I don't know. Is it worth spending $1,500 on it? That might be where your technology comes from Lou. Maybe they'll change bows up next. Maybe it'll make a little crossbow so you can fit your palm. They they have some, they have some, they have some smaller ones. You know, it's kind of funny because I'm listening to this, <clears throat> and I, I do use a crossbow, and I hunt off the ground a lot. But my last crossbow, I bought one of those Parkers before they went um, uh, yeah. out of business. And I think I spent 500 bucks. So I always get a kick out of these these people with these, you know, there's some there's some expense. When you get in the accessories, there's some people with two, $3,000 compounds. And I look at these things. Like my buddy Ron came over here one day with his bow, and my jaw dropped. He opened it, and I went, oh, I'm like, what is that? And he's like, what's wrong? And I go, that looks like two to three grand. And he goes, yep, that's 2,400 bucks. And I said, I'm the cheater with a $500 crossbow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how much are those Hoyt uh, carbon bows now? Um, I'm going to look it up while we're talking here. Yeah. $1,800, $1,900. And that's without the, the that's stuff. The bear, the that's the bare bow. Yeah. $1,800 looks like the going price for them. That's crazy. So maybe that's the answer, Dan. Maybe things are going to go um, uh, more expensive than carbon fiber. I don't know. 
I, yeah. yeah. Um, I would, but I, but my answer would be, if you're asking me is I would get a good stand and sticks and then, um, cause it, it's going to last you your lifetime and then you can upgrade to a bow whenever you got the, the funds to do that. And that'll last your lifetime too. If you take care of it, you know, if you want to watch another video, click right here, but don't forget to subscribe before you leave. <laughs>